Good evening, I'm the Angry Astronaut. And I really like blowing things up. And you know, so does Sierra Space. So ever since I released my last piece about Sierra Space's progress with the life module that they intend to use for Orbital Reef, the replacement for ISS, Sierra Space has been incredibly busy at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, subjecting this material, this inflatable module, to incredible amounts of pressure in order to demonstrate that it will be able to endure the rigors of not only low Earth orbit, but also interplanetary space as well. This is Beth Shapey. She's the lead engineer on this project, and her goal during this test was to repeat the test that they had carried out a few months ago, subjecting this material to a pressure of 180 PSI, which NASA regards as being sufficient to survive in outer space. This here, this blue is our test stand. This holds our article in place while we pressurize it. Some of these lines, all these are data cables. So these are measuring uh, the pressure or the temperature. We've multiplied our, our number of ground anchors by four. Uh, chains going kind of laterally in an X pattern across. And that should keep this thing down once all the pressure releases. But of course, Sierra Space didn't want to take this only to 180 PSI. They wanted to take it a hell of a lot further. During their last test, they took it to 192 PSI, and this time they wanted to try to get it over 200. Now, in the meantime, a lot of you are still probably are expressing some misgivings about using inflatable modules, and that's understandable. As a matter of fact, NASA has been very hesitant to employ this kind of material. Instead, with Lunar Gateway, for example, they intend to use a conventional, old-fashioned space station module for the HALO module and quite probably for the IHAB module manufactured by the European Space Agency. However, once they introduce what is going to be the core module that will carry mankind from Earth to Mars, assuming we don't use Starship for that purpose, that very likely is going to be the Sierra Space Life Module. And why is this the case? Well, because if you're going to carry out a six-month interplanetary journey, doing it inside tiny tin cans is just not ideal. Why not do it inside a module that's the size of a three-story apartment building, which is what the Sierra Space Life Module is essentially the equivalent of? It's enormous, not as big as the fairing of Starship, but nevertheless a very, very big module, and also lightweight weight and also capable of being carried inside a conventional 5 meter fairing, which means you're not going to need all of the logistics that are necessary with Starship in order to send large amounts of habitable space out to lunar orbit or perhaps even to Mars. Those are important advantages, and as you can see from the excited and positive reactions of the people on the test floor, they managed to hit that 200 plus margin. It was 204 PSI, actually. But regardless of how resilient this material may be, is it really going to be able to hold up under micrometeoroid impacts or space debris, that sort of thing? What happens if it rips? What happens if it experiences a serious breach? Well, I got the answers to that question at the IAC convention in Paris. Okay, another question. Um, we just did the pressure test. I got the opportunity to report on that uh, as it was released. Thank you for that. Um, the, the whole pressure test, the, uh, the amount of pressure you subjected the module to was five times what the usual pressure test is for a module. What's next to prove that inflatable will work and to make everybody trust it? Because there does seem to be a trust issue of inflatable versus a solid metal module. Well, we have a second burst test coming up, so we'll do even a, a higher pressure at that. Uh, but just the technology that's gone into making those safe is very impressive. And, and people may think that it's a very thin shell, but it's not. It's, it's multiple layers of material that take any kind of mi micrometeorite and will, when it enters, it dissipates. It dissipates the energy and breaks apart the micrometeorite until it 
you know, it's just powder by the time it gets to any sort of pressure bladder. So we really have protection from the outside as well as burst pressure from the inside. We want to avoid as much radiation to the human body as possible while we're up there. We don't have the atmospheric uh, layers to protect us when we're in space. So those layers of material help reduce the amount of radiation that comes into the human body. Okay, let's say, uh, you know, cataclysmic scenario, a micrometeoroid is, is large enough to penetrate. Um, what's the, the patching scenario for Vectran versus a, a metal leak of some kind? That's very similar. We would patch it from the inside, of course, and, and layer that up. It depends on the size. If it's, you know, explosive, right, where it's catastrophic and we, can, we just have time to get out, we'll just seal the hatch and that will be a loss of the vehicle. If it's a very small, you know, penetration, then we will have time to go in and patch that from the inside with multiple layers uh, and, and repair that. We'll do a, a pressure test on it to make sure it's safe. Uh, while, you know, if it's a small hole, we will will probably not need protective environment for the person, but if it is very large, I will have to go in with a, you know, an EVA type suit to do that repair. So clearly this module passed its second test with flying colors. The next step is to introduce a full scale reproduction of the life module and see how it holds up under pressure. All of this repetition is what is necessary to prove to NASA that this is going to be an ideal solution for habitation in outer space and not just in orbit, not just in lunar orbit, but also for lunar bases and other locations that require a large pressurized area that can keep astronauts comfortable and safe in some of the most hostile environments that we can imagine. And this is a solution that really has many, many applications throughout the Artemis project and beyond. And not only can this be deployed on the surface by large vehicles such as Starship, but it can also be deployed by tiny vehicles such as the Alpaca, as you can see here. If we're talking talking about an inflatable module that can be contained inside a five meter fairing, that means even small vessels like Alpaca can deploy it. And given the fact that Artemis is only going to require habitable space for four astronauts for at least the next 10 years, this could have many, many applications in the future. Please subscribe, please like this video, also check out the description for various ways to support me as I continue to bring you this content and thanks so much to Sierra Space for generously providing me with this exclusive footage on top of all of the other opportunities that they've afforded my little channel over the years. They have been fantastic partners and I truly believe that they represent a large part of the cutting edge of mankind's exploration of the solar system. So as always guys, stay angry about space!